The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Watermelon, watermelon. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Uh, sorry. Witness, your name, please. April May! At your service, Did, did anybody else Take see that, use. or am I just a pervert? No, <laughs> Nobody else she saw did that? that on purpose. Okay. She's doing a... Look how she's doing Hello, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, the remastered trilogy on Steam. My name is Fatal Foxtrot. Hi, I'm Owo. And where we last left off, we were we just got testimony from D Dick Gumshoe describing the murder and how he knows for a fact that it was Maya because of these like very circumstantial things that he said that he claimed was hard evidence. And hard evidence, right, right. So uh, we're about to take his testimony apart real quick, and um, so the judge is like, "Very well, the defense may begin its cross examination." And we'll go. Alright, so the cross-examination of hard evidence. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. Or, of course, we're going to press everything because, like, no, they don't get mad about that yet. <laughs> and did you find any evidence? Now, now. Don't jump the gun on me, pal. Just listen. I'm getting to the good part. God, I got a bad feeling about this. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Ho ho! Then who wrote it, smarty pants? H who? Um, I did. It could have been anybody. I mean... It's like the killer is. He's gonna say, "Yeah, but uh, you think I wrote it?" and then. Miss May couldn't have done it because she was in a hotel across the room. But, I don't have to prove that she didn't do it. I just have to cast reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. This is a courtroom for murder. Like, you don't have to prove they didn't do it. You just have to prove that there's doubt that they might have. Like, it, they yeah. might not have. That's it. So, I'm going to say, like, uh, it could have been me. Right. What? So, so it was you? No, 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 no. I'm just saying it could have been me. Can you prove it wasn't? Hold on. So, you admit to this. You admit that you wrote the note. Uh, do you want to do... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess. No, because yeah. you, you're Yeah, no, shit. no, it's okay. Uh. Listen to me, Mr. Wright. This is a court of law, and I expect you to refrain from making thoughtless statements. Amateur. <sighs> that wasn't a thoughtless statement. He's got a good point. Well, detective, tell us what was written on that memo you found. I guess you can read the green too. On it, the word Maya was clearly written in black. Do you have proof it was Mia who wrote that? Of course I do, pal. Uh oh. He's sounding pretty confident about that. This might not be good. Lab results showed that the blood was the victim's. Okay. What kind of tests were these again? Huh? What kind? Uh, well... I either take the, uh, the little bits of the, in the, uh, blood, the, uh, or hemo... hemo... <laughs> Hemo, he, hermogoblin, goblin, hobgob, or hermogoblin, boblin. I refuse to testify on this matter, pal. I'm not an expert yeah, on you're supposed blood, to te blood tests. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm a, you just said that from the beginning. I'm a detective, not a lab tech. Exactly. <laughs> That's a good point, and Phoenix knows that. <laughs> like, don't ask the detective that. Ask the lab tech. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that was quite clear. You may continue with your testimony. Thanks, pal. I mean, yeah, Anissa. Detective Gumshoe. 
<laughs> yeah. I look forward to your next evaluation, as should you. Uh, uh, uh oh. That's. I feel like that's pressuring him about his job, well, which is I think swaying. He, I think he's trying to say that you should know a little bit more about these lab tests. Right, but than... like, here's the thing he's the DA, right? <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah, <laughs> so he has influence over the police. He's right. threatening his job if he doesn't give a good he's, testimony. No, he's not. He's saying, I think he said that in regards to you should know more about this test than, yeah. than you do. Like, you don't, you don't have to be a lab tech to know how the blood test yeah, works. Yeah, but I don't to say, think. I look forward to your evaluation. Sounds like he's personally giving him his evaluation. Like, I don't know. Well, maybe it feels he's like involved a power in it. Trip. Yeah, it just feels like well, That was a mess. Oh, right. Where was I? Sorry. You I didn't mean to click. My finger slipped. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Wait, objection. Bye. Because we have a autopsy that says that she died on impact. She wouldn't have been able well, to write it. What's his next thing that he says, though? Hold on. Before, Before she, she died, died the, the victim wrote the killer's name. We'll do it there. Autopsy report. Death was instantaneous. Objection! Detective Gumshoe. There's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey. That's really what you're saying? What? What? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Yes, of course it is. Answer of the question. Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? <laughs> you have it backwards, detective. B backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But... No butt in your way out of this one, detective. Order, order! The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? When? The day of the murder. The day after the murder. Was it? Yes. Okay. It, it was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? what? No, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, please. what? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see! Damn you, Wedgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? Uh. The detective's a sham. Yeah, I guess so. Detective <laughs> Gumshoe, you're a sham. How could you give me a faulty report? Oh, uh, no, huh? that's not his I, fault, though. I thought... Detective Gumshoe. Uh. I'm disappointed in you, handing him the wrong report like that. Uh, I, uh, I'm sorry, sir. You are at fault, detective. This isn't going to look good on your evaluation next month. See, he's like power tripping. What? But. <sighs> well, he's not telling him to lie. He's telling him to tell the truth and he do his yeah, job. But it so feels it's like, like, like it's not like it's not. It feels like this is what a supervisor is supposed to say. Right, but like, it's gonna fuck with his head while he gives his testimony because he's like, my job uh, is on the line, my job is on the line. Well, yeah, your job is on the line, so do a good testimony. Like, this is your job. <laughs> I don't this, know. It's his job. He's supposed to be doing it. Is right. It? Yeah. But anyway, yeah, right. So, your honor, I submit this report to the court. Uh, understood. The court accepts the evidence. The autopsy report was updated in the court record. Well, Your Honor, 
The evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, Can yes. Can you look at the piece of paper that Maya's name was on? And yeah, I think you're jumping the gun a little bit. We can't do that yet. Oh. I, I know what you're talking about. That's a spoiler. That's just... Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. I'm just gonna pretend that didn't conversation didn't happen. Oh, this isn't good. <laughs> The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Watermelon, watermelon. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Uh, sorry. Witness, your name, please. April May! At your service, Wink! Did, did anybody else Taylor see that, Hughes. or am I just a pervert? No, <laughs> Nobody else she saw did that? that on purpose. Okay. She's doing it. Look how she's holding her hands. Yeah. I'm doing it here, where you can't see it. That's but not look. possible. I can, yes, look, I'm her doing wrists it. go all the way back to here. Babe, just... I'm doing it right now. What the fuck? It's very uncomfortable, and it makes your titties look... Ridiculous. Yeah, this is kind of ridiculous. But anyway, hello, Miss <laughs> April May. It's kind of painful. The way, oh, she's, the standing. way she's standing looks yeah. painful too. She's like doing it on Hold purpose. Uh, an introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton titty jiggling. Oh yes, Your Honor. This is not good. <laughs> she's already captured the heart of every man in the courtroom. Uh, I like the heart on. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Ah, uh, gee, I was like, in my hotel room today. <laughs> I checked right in after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fay and Company law offices. Mmm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Here we go. You ready? Mm -hmm. It was like nine o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know. And then, oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Mousy? Then the woman, like, dodged on one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her, and, and, she hit her! And then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end! That's all I saw! Every little bitsy witsy teensy witsy bit! I warned you not to do that. Mmm. <laughs> well, your honor. I see! It is a remarkably solid testimony. More like she's got a remarkably solid rack. Alright. I don't need, see a need to trouble the witness any... Wait, oh, oui, your honor. Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? What about your cross-examination? I mean, uh, uh, I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? <clears throat> it's hard to switch between the judge and Edgeworth because they both use, like, the same octaves yeah. in my voice. Hold on. Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Maya Fay's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Excuse you. H hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yeah. Yes, obviously. Fuck you, I'm trying I'll to- I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination, Your Honor. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. If only because I'm entitled to, to defend my client from fucking murder, you absolute madman. Yeah. She has to have some <laughs> weakness. Also, like, 
calling it cowardly to find holes in a lie? Yeah, to find lies is not cowardly. That's, what the fuck? That's like retribution, if anything. Yeah. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. Right. So, here we go. It was like 9 o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know? I don't see any need to press that. I mean... I mean, she wouldn't... She doesn't... Isn't expected to know the exact time it was. But unlike Mr. Sala, who was pretty insistent. He yeah. should not have been. Yeah. I mean, she didn't call the police until 9.08, which is when you arrived, though. Yeah, okay. Why did you do that? Huh? What? <coughs> like, why what? Why'd you look out the window? Why Why wouldn't anyone? Okay, yeah, uh, the CIA news is a bad idea. Were you expecting to see something? Oh, well, um, gee! What? That's it? She can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of, you know... <laughs> I had a feeling. Well, I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little harder on this one? No, I don't think so. Edra's gonna yell at me. Okay. If I go too deep, I might not come back out alive. Okay, if there isn't anything in the whole testimony else to do, I'll come back to that. Because, like, I feel like I just going to You looked out the window. What did you see next? And, oh! I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. Yeah, alright. The one attacking her was that mousy girl sitting in the defendant's now, chair. Now this, I want to be absolutely sure you know you saw her. Like, are you sure? How do you know she was the defendant? I'm like playing this like I would want to mm. a courtroom to actually go. Yeah. <laughs> like, in my idea. So how do you know it was the defendant exactly? Yeah. Huh? Well, you know, she, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. No. Look, I, I just know, okay? You can't see her physique, and right. she's wearing giant fucking acolyte robes, like... There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's right. Uh, I feel like questioning this. Yeah, I do too, because... Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. You're lying. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? <gasps> Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yeah, what's the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this I mean. Okay, so if you had really witnessed my client, Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. Exactly, that's what I said. <laughs> No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks like far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony's bogus. Uh, but, but... Still, we don't know she was dressed that way the night of the yeah, murder. She was. she was, Your Honor, I was there. I saw her, so did Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Oh, what are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl. I promise. Oh, I, I hate her. <laughs> I hate her too. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. Alright. So, wait, oh, is this a different testimony? Okay. I, I did see everything. I did! The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon! I saw it! I did! That... that clock! Um, the statuey clock? 
the thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? <laughs> Wait, everyone submitted it as a statue. How would she know it's a clock? Again, yeah, it's the same thing as last time. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. And like that this time he's like, yeah, examine her. She's fucking lying. <laughs> you know. I did see everything I did. So you saw me then too. Of course. I remember that spiky hair anywhere. Spiky? The witness will refrain from personal attacks on the defense attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Personal girl. attacks. I'm sorry. Very well, continue. <laughs> the, the victim, the woman who dodged the first attack, ran off to the right. Floor plan. No, wait. It would have been to the right from. Not from her point of view. Yeah, would have looked. Can we look at it before yeah, we yeah, present let's, let's, it? Yeah, we can. Uh, okay, floor plans. Check. This is the window looking in from the hotel. If she ran she off to the right. Didn't, though she ran into the glass thing. We don't know that yet. We don't. We, that hasn't come up in evidence yet. Like, so we can't like bring that up. I, I bet you. Like, I that's the like same thing in regular it. court too. But you were right about the thinker, because like. Yeah, we can't say it yet because. Um, we, we gotta go to the... And the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. Yeah, and she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That clock. Statue of clock. Right. I was gonna ask her. Hey, clock? Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? Well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something now. That, that clock, um, the statue clock, the think I think. Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Re revealing Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? You just said that the statue of the thinker was a clock, but there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order, order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Oh! Uh. The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You'll you will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Mm. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Whew, that was close. If you stop me there, the trial will be over. What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? Uh, what? That's... Because... I heard it? Yes! I heard it say the time! So, you've been to the law office... No, she couldn't have. It was gutted. Exactly. It had paperwork in it. Which is why he's alluding to. So, so you... you've been to the law offices of Fane Company. N no! Hey! I didn't say that! Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room! <laughs> the law office is a fan company where the murder took place is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Mmm, very w well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. Do you want to be right? Yeah, okay. no, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... It couldn't have rung. Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. That clock is missing its clockwork. 
Now, could you possibly... Just take a look, right now. Oh. See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It is quite empty. Uh, Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat liar. Look <laughs> fat! <laughs> well, Miss May. Tisk, 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 Mr. Wright. Huh? <coughs> Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? We have proof. If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, hmm, that is true. That is quite a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. Oh my god. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Yes, I can. Yeah? How? Oh, 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 impossible, of course. I have proof. What? <laughs> it's just like that. Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now, I'll show you the proof you like so much. No, that's you. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... Yeah. Hold on. Uh... The clock isn't working right now. I had to take the clockwork out. It's on yeah. page three, okay. No, I need to present this. Take a look at this. Mmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Oh, hello! You have a girly cell phone! Well, wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. The defendant's cell phone? Th th this wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it? <sighs> Local detective better remember he's up for evaluations. See, he has I something know, to do with like his job. It's like a running gag now. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. So you want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Ah, I should probably tell you- Oh wait, ah, uh, I should probably tell you. The clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame! I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. Beep. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear that the clockwork was already gone by the time it was recorded. Which was well before the witness arrived at her hotel. <laughs> well, Miss May, could you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that the weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before! Um, what store was it again? Uh, I go to so many. No, Larry, Larry made it himself. Oops, I forgot. So the witness has seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes, yes I do. Larry made it himself. The witness claims she'd seen it before, but this is directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to the court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness has not seen the clock before. Made by Larry Butts. It's the clock. It says it right there. Made by Larry Butts. It's simple. 
This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible! Everything is sold in stores! Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Oh! <laughs> oh? Excuse is not on sale today. <laughs> She's going super April May. <laughs> I peeked so hard, sorry. It's okay. What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! This is the same thing that happened to Saw it when. Yeah, he yeah. like freaked the fuck out. Whoa, whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. <laughs> Silly me. Did I, um, like, uh, lose it? I guess I did. <laughs> That's scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm, <sighs> oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Yes! Good. Okay, this is it. Yes, your honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... You had heard about you it. Heard about yeah, she was tapping. She, that's, she was wiretapping. Yeah, the witness yeah. had never held the clock in her hand. That's right. I remember finding that in the drawer. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Yep. Have a look at this. Oh, ah, whoa, that? <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Certainly, Miss April May. You were wiretapping the victim, Miss Mia May's phone, were you not? <gasps> Objection! Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Yeah. Yeah. Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah? I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... I present the defendant's cell phone again. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Beep. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on for me. Again? What's it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used the wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? Hi! Hi! Objection! Objection! Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. <laughs> Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? <laughs> Miss May! Shut up, all of you! What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you lawyer! Oh, you're going to jail, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair! All of you g ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad girl, is that it? Is that it? 
shit's not gonna fly. <laughs> that did it. The court seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal with the final blow. I don't think she'd go there. Why did you tap her phone? <laughs> Answer the question! Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't Tippy tapping her irrelevant? <laughs> oh, shit. She's saying exactly what Edgeworth would want her to say. Miss May! You are tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Ha! I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that... that evil grin. You were probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Oh. Damn, she's good. <laughs> well, you're not the first man who thought that. And of course, I can and will. You can't be serious. No way. Why, I say, what? Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Hmph. Okay, so, the killing happened around 9 o'clock at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from the sweet bellboy. Uh, room mm -hmm. service? <laughs> Ice coffee, I believe it was. Ice coffee? You know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you have regular cold coffee. <laughs> ice, <laughs> ice coffee. Ugh. I think I'm making it up. Ask the bellboy. <laughs> Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. It's not even what we asked That's her. That's not what that was about. So, where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime, with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, my affair, commit murder. No, they're going to just let her walk away? There's no way I can win this unless I tell Miss May... Time Miss May to... Oh, murder. time Miss May to the murder somehow. Sorry. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Uh, well, come on, think of something. Should we call the bellboy? I don't think we should keep talking to Miss May. She's got an alibi to not be in that room. Yeah. And that's what we need to do. But the bellboy might tell us something that... Mm -hmm. You know what? I think we're going to need to deliberate on this decision a little bit in between episodes. Okay. We'll see you guys. Like, uh, vote in the comments. Yeah. You know, do you want us to keep talking to May, or should we call the bellboy? Because the music implies that this is an important decision. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next episode when we'll hopefully have this decision made. All right. Bye, y'all.